aging at home. What happens if that's not the case for you? I'm Jill Horner. This is Comcast Newsmakers. With me is Russ McDade. He is president and CEO of the Pennsylvania Healthcare Association. Thanks so much for being with us. Thank you for having me. Uh, first of all, let's talk a little bit about the population here in the Commonwealth. We have a rapidly aging population, many people above the age of 65. We also have many people above the age of 85. What does that mean in, in terms of care options and the ability to potentially age in place here in Pennsylvania? You know, thanks, Jill. And it, it means that we need more of everything and we need to be having more care conversations. Most of us, we put, I'm in the process right now, thankfully it's over, of planning for our, our oldest daughter's college. We put a lot of time and energy into that with her, put a lot of time and energy into planning for our vacations. Uh, we spend very little time looking at our long-term care needs, and it's probably the th one of the issues that's most important to plan for as you move forward. And when we talk about those long-term care needs, it really depends on the individual. Many people say, I want to stay at home as long as possible. I want that to be the focus. But what happens when that's not the case? What types of options are available here in Pennsylvania? Sure, 95 percent of people out there say they want to stay at home. I'm not sure why it's not 100. We all want to. The question is when you can't any longer. When you need intensive skilled nursing services on a 24-7 basis, then where do you go? We have skilled nursing in rehab centers in Pennsylvania, which can meet your needs on an ongoing 24-hour basis. Uh, assisted living and personal care residences as well. They can meet the needs of probably an individual who needs slightly less care. Uh, and then we have a number of independent living options, senior housing options, uh, and of course home care and home health agencies that can bring services into your home when that's a possibility for you. Really a spectrum of care that you're talking about, different levels of care available. You have a, a spotlight series, uh, it's called 21st Century Long-Term Care. It's an educational and informational campaign that you are putting out there. What types of information are you disseminating as part of this campaign? We're trying to get the message out that it's not scary. Uh, that when this time comes, families and the individual who needs the care oftentimes kind of ratchet it up and it becomes me against you to kind of demystify that, show that these are hardworking, caring individuals out there providing quality care in our facilities on a 24-7 basis. Uh, everything that we do is about providing quality care for residents. I often say, and we're up in the Capitol quite often, uh, you know, everyone, no one shows up to work on any given day um, trying to do anything but provide the best possible care they can for the individuals under their care. Uh, but the bottom line is you really want people to understand what the options are and to have this conversation ahead of time. Well, that's right. And look at what the costs are. I mean, there's a prevailing myth out there that it's cheaper to care for someone in the community than in a nursing facility. That's actually not the case when someone needs as much care in the community as they would have needed in a nursing facility. The only time that it costs less to care for someone in the community, um, which is our goal when we can, is if they need less services. If they need the same round-the-clock intensity of skilled nursing, of therapies, of specialized care and support, the most cost-effective way to get that for them is in the skilled nursing center. Thanks for being with us. Thank you, Jill. We've been talking with Russ McDade. I'm Jill Horner for Comcast Newsmakers.